tell you the greatest miracle that you will ever come to encounter in your own life is when you look at yourself in the mirror. You are God's greatest miracle in your own life that you will ever encounter. You are a beautiful creation that God had chosen to make and to form out of His own heart. And when God created you, He did not use something else beside Himself to create you. The Word of God tells us, you know, Moses writes the story. When God wanted to explain to you where you come from and who you are, he did not send an angel to speak to Moses. He did not commission a prophet to come and talk to Moses and tell him the story. God himself came down from heaven and he met with Moses face to face and he said, I'm going to tell you how it all began and I want you to record it down from my mouth. Because I do not want anybody that ever comes to this writing of yours to wonder how it came that I made them and what I intended for them. I want them to understand it from my mouth. And so Moses write, wrote down the story of your life. And of my life because you know your life and my life it started at the same place it started the day God created a man called Adam and he breathed himself into Adam the Bible says that man was created in the image and in the likeness of God now many times when we hear that we think of that as the way that God looks, you know. We look like God and, and so on, but what it really speaks of is to be as God is. It means that God created man to be as he is. Amen. That means man thought the way God thinks. God reasoned the way that he reason in man, he caused man to reason with his mind, to think with his mind, to be as he is in every respect of who man was. And that's exactly how God intended for your life to be. Because out of Adam, Adam had one job, the pastor seemed to have done a good job of that one job, because God told Adam, I want you to take what I've put inside of you and to go and multiply it in sons. I want you to reproduce it in sons. The reason for that, why the God wanted to be reproduced, because the prophet tells us, he says, a time is coming, says the Lord, when the whole earth shall be filled with my glory as the waters covers the sea. And that was God's original intention when he created his first son called Adam. Now you say, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm not so comfortable that you call Adam a son. Well, you, if you are not comfortable with me calling Adam a son, I guess that you are not a son also. You see, the Bible says, those that are led of the Spirit, they are the Son. Oh, God knows you are a son. Yes. And God knows you would have been produced from Adam, right? Because that's what God told Adam. He said, you need, you carry within you, I've put the design and the destiny of all of creation. 
It's going to come forth from you, Adam. You need to reproduce these sons. And those sons that was going to be reproduced, what did they look like? What did they look like? Like God. They were full of God's glory. You know, one day when the Lord spoke to me about His glory, He said, you know, when people speak about my glory, they talk about either an atmosphere or a cloud or a mist. Or something. God says, I want to explain to you what my glory is. Yes. And he sent me to my rose garden. He said, I want you to pick one of the roses. And he said to me, what is the glory of this rose? Oh, it was so easy for me to, uh, to answer because I love roses. I said, it smells so wonderful, the aroma, the perfume, and it is so beautiful to look at. And God says, yes, you are right. That is the glory of that rose. He said to me, now tell me, what is the glory of man? He said, you know what? I designed and created everything on earth for my glory. But man, I created as my glory. Yeah. I put myself in man so man would become the reflection of who God is. I want you to listen to me this morning because this is who you are. You say, no, no, no. It's not who I am. I honor. It's not the way my life goes. I'm going to explain this to you this morning. I'm telling you this morning you are the Mindset. 
So you started believing certain things. You started living in a certain way. Your circumstances shaped your life. Some people are born in abusive homes and so their whole future is shaped by the experience. Their whole identity is formed out of what they experience in their environment and in a place called earth that is separate from who they really are. And so maybe today you are telling me I do not know that man you are talking about, that perfect man. I cannot today say, I can identify what you are saying. You are talking about how God made me, but my life is different. But I want to tell you the story because you see, a thief came along. What does a thief do? Steals. He steals. He plunders. He kills. He destroys. And a thief came along your life journey. That thief stole you away from God's plan. Listen very carefully. God's plan for your life is unchangeable. It is eternal. It is settled. It is who you are. But a thief came along and stole you away from God's plan. And introduced you into a life you were never designed to live in a place you were never supposed to know. You were not designed to survive a sinful world. That's not what God intended. You were supposed to be born in Eden. But the devil introduced you into a system in a world that you were not designed for. That you would not be able to go in and he would come and he would enforce his ways, his laws, his government upon your life and cause you to start living a life God never dreamed for you to live. And here's the problem. That life is full of hardship. It is full of sorrow. It is full of broken people and lives that have been destroyed. It is full of so many things that God never dreamed for you. And in that life, we find people crying out to God, saying, Father, where are you? God, where are you in my life? Where are you in my circumstances? Look at my children, look at my home, look at my finances, look at everything in my life. I am sick. Things are against me. Where is God? And I want to tell you, God is where He's always been. Yes. And His plan has not changed for your life. Yes. He planned a perfect life for you. Life overflowing with His goodness. Yes. You know, if you go read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, I have it this morning, but I, I don't want to confuse the guys that I'm going to leave it. But if you read Ephesians 1 verse 4, it's going to tell you that God predestined your life. Now what does that mean? Well, if you look at the word, it has got two parts to it. It has got a destination and attached to that word is the word pre, P-R-E, which means before, before you reach your destination, before you arrive, that is pre, God predestined you. In other words, before you arrived on this planet, God had already made you and planned you and destined your life the way that he intended for you to live. And you know what? If you follow that verse, it ends in saying that all of this was done in love. Which means God decided your entire life, planned you, purposed you, and all of that He did underlined with love. 
In love, there is no sickness. There is no heartbreak. There is no disappointment. There is no brokenness. There is blessing and overflow. And life filled with the glory of God. Yes. So somewhere, somebody missed with what God had prepared for you and what was supposed to be your destination. Somebody altered the course. Mm. You ended up living a life that is not true. It's not what God had in mind for you. And in that life, so many voices are speaking to you today. Yes. And you know today, you can be a child of God and I'm telling you, if you don't understand this truth, those voices from the past will still be speaking to you. Yes. If you grew up in a house where you were abused and, or things did not go right or you weren't treated right, those voices even after receiving Jesus, if you don't understand how to conquer that thing, those voices will still speak to you and keep you down. Yes. Keep you broken. Keep you crippled. I've got good news for you today. God's plans has not changed for you. Yes. You know the moment Adam put you in that position. Alright, let me give you a chance. The moment Adam put you in that position, because you see, you didn't ask for it. But he put all of us in that position. When he chose wrong, all of our choices were going to be wrong. He chose for everybody. From that moment on, God started working on a plan. Yes. To get you back on track with what your destination should be. Yes. And the first thing he did, he said, I can no longer be among you because your choice has separated me from your world he said but what i'm going to do i'm going to give you a list of instructions i'm going to give you my law because if this is in your midst at least at least you will be able to cope with this for the moment and follow these instructions which will give you kind of like a guideline as to how i intended for you to live and you can follow this law, and this law will have a duration of time. It will serve you so long as I am not with you. It will replace my presence among you. And for some time went on, and for some time the law served its purpose. Until in the fullness of time. God sent his son, born of a woman, and Jesus arrived, and you know, when Jesus arrived, he first arrived as a child, but inside of the child was a son, inside of the child was a destiny, inside of the child was a dream, and so today he stood in the Jordan, and the heavens opened, and God, declared him his son the son came out of the child and from that moment jesus entered his destiny on earth as the son of god everything changed yeah. but the son was not the end of god's plan he was a part of god's plan jesus came for a very specific season and for a very specific reason because God's business was still with you. God's business was still to try and find a way of redeeming you back. Now I want to tell you something that you will never forget this. God never begins anything before he's not completed everything. You see, when Jesus came and died on earth, he was manifesting something that had already happened in eternity. Yes. What that means to you is that if God gives you a word, you don't have to think about it. Because the reason why he's giving you the word is already completed. 
what is produced in the world now. It already exists. It's finalized. So when Jesus came, he already died on the cross before the world was ever made, before you were ever made. And the scripture tells us this, that all things were predestined inside of him and prepared in him. So what had happened? God said, now go and do it, my son. So he came down and he went through his life, served his time on earth, demonstrated to us what it means to be a son of God. He was no murderer. He was the way that you could see what does a man, what does a son look clothed in flesh that radiates the glory of God. What kind of things will happen? My God, if he needs money, uh, they confront him and say, pay your taxes right now. He's got nothing in his pockets. He tells Peter, go put a hook in the ocean, my brother. He says, just wait, man. Peter, drop a line. But just drop it around the corner there by that pier. The fish is already waiting. That fish, that morning, God said to that fish, my son is going to need that coin. Go and swim there by, uh, by, uh, by, 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 by the Caesar's place. And you know he's taking a bath and there's a coin falling out of his pocket. Pick the coin up, go away there by the harbor. When the hook comes, grab the hook. They need the money. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Am I going too fast? <laughs> Why would God send him to catch a fish to get money? Because the fish went to fetch the money. And he was waiting for the hook. So when Peter dropped the line, he wasn't sitting there waiting. The, the fish said, hey, pull me out, here's your money, put me back, I need to go. I've got another mission done. God already predestined everything, predestined everything. There's no surprises for God in your life. There's no circumstances that he's not ready and prepared for. All right, so he sends Jesus and Jesus comes and he shows us what sons will look like. He demonstrates the power. He also comes to declare the kingdom of God. He says, listen, the time is coming when the whole message will change now from what it was because the time is coming for the restoration of the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. In other words, I'm going to come and put back what was lost. This Jesus, as he fulfills his ministry, fulfills his destiny, he's got a message for you and me because he becomes our example of how we should live. He shows us the authority, the power, the dominion. He shows us that if you are a son of God, filled with the Spirit of God, you don't cry to heaven for help. I'm going to get in trouble now. You are heaven's answer on earth. It's already in you. You see, Jesus knew exactly who he was. As a boy, he went to the temple and he spent time there with uh, the church leaders and his mother was looking for him and she finally got hold of him like any good mother. She said, don't you ever do that. He rebuked her. He said, I am called to be about my father's business. He knew who he was. Mm -hmm. He did not wonder. And because he knew who he was, in his whole life you see him demonstrating God. Because why? My father and I am one. My father and I am one. Jesus demonstrates the power and the life of God. Do you know why? Because there is no more separation between them. The reason why we battle through life and struggle through life, the reason why we are fighting from a lower place is because we've not come to a place where we and the Father have become one. Nobody has taught us this. Nobody has brought us there. We've got the professions and the confessions. We proclaim these things. But we don't manifest them. 
We don't demonstrate them. And we don't love them. And I've got news for you this morning. God is calling upon you. And all of creation is crying out for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because we have the answer vested in us. We carry what the Father wants to produce on earth. And so if we live in a frequency or in a realm where we live in a world understanding things in a certain way, receiving things in a certain way, it separates us from that authority. Yes. It causes us to say, oh God, um, I need your help. And God says, you've already got it. It's in you. Produce the kingdom. Show forth my power. I'm depending on you. Oh God. The anointing is not something that comes upon you. It's something that comes within you. And the measure of anointing in your life, the measure of the manifestation of the glory of God in your life is a direct result of where you walk in revelation with God. You see, you can't produce more than what you know about yourself. You can't produce more than what you know about God. I'm not talking about knowing here. You can go to Bible school. You can take all the exams. You can know everything. I'm talking about an inner knowledge that comes to a living impartation that becomes an experience and a demonstration. That's what I'm talking about. We should not pray for the sick. Jesus never prayed for the sick. He healed the sick. You've got authority over sickness. You've got authority over demons. You don't talk to them. You don't converse with them. You don't argue with them. What should happen is if they come into your presence, they should start responding. That's what happened with Jesus. When he put his foot at Gadara, what happened? The demon started crying out, why? Because he was the son of God with all of the authority of heaven in him. Let me tell you something. Jesus came to lead many sons back to glory. Amen. You and I are called to live his life on earth. You and I are supposed to demonstrate. Listen, what is a witness? We've got it all so wrong. I'm going to witness of Jesus. So it means I've got to tell everybody on the street, do you know Jesus? Let's pray, let's pray. Do you know Jesus? I want to tell you about Jesus. Witnessing as God is saying, become a living epistle. Become my power and my life expressed through yours. Amen. Witness to the fact that I'm alive in you. Witness to the fact that you are a son. Witness to the fact that it's a kingdom beyond the domain of this world. And that if you dwell in that kingdom, you have the authority of the almighty God vested in you. You don't have to cry for it. It's already in you. So God sent His Son to change our direction of understanding, of thinking, of believing to what? He's taking us back to Adam. Did you see Adam trying to work anything out on life in the garden? Did you see him making plans and he had to work things out? Everything happened by automation. Adam knew exactly what he was supposed to do. God said, name the animals. Why? Because God designed him with his potential in him. And God is calling you and me back through the cross. He said, I want to take you back. I want to take you back to who you are. I want you to live the life. I want you to be who you really are. Because you see, your whole life, they've lied to you. Your whole life, you, you were told that you are bad. God does not make bad people. 
circumstances changes people. People have called you everything under the sun. God has never called you that. He's called you a son. Maybe this morning, your way has been lost because a deceiver and a thief came into your life and changed your direction. And it's causing you now to live in a place where you don't experience what you read in the Bible. I want to tell you, 90% of Christians do not experience what they read in the Bible. They confess it, and they possess it, and they prophesy it, and they do all those things, but in their real living, it doesn't work that way. Because for it to work, you've got to understand who you are. You've got to understand who God originally designed you to be, what He put inside of you, who you are. You are not just another feeble little Christian. You are the reflection of His glory on earth. You are His hope in this world. You are His witness in this world. And so no matter what God designed you to do, whether you work for somebody, I'm telling you, there's an anointing in your life that will cause you to outwork everybody else. Amen. If you're a business person, there are keys in you that's going to unlock doors in the business world that others can't see. Amen. No matter what God called you for, you're an artist. Every painting you will ever paint was designed in you before you ever came on this planet. Yeah. If you're a poet, every poem you would ever write was written in you before you ever drew your first breath on earth. It's about finding your destiny. It's about being realigned through Jesus. And this is this morning what I want to tell you. It's not about giving your heart to Jesus because everybody gives their heart to Jesus. They come and sit in church. Every Sunday, they clap hands. They until we leave the door, then the real world starts. Then the real battle starts. Then the tire meets the car. And things in our lives go another way that we would like them to go. Because God never intended for you to live your life in your power. You were designed to demonstrate His power. So this morning, I want to tell you sitting in this place, who have stolen black or white or pink or yellow, you are not a thief. God did not design you as one. I want to tell you this morning, you that lie, you're not a liar. God did not design you that way. I want to tell you this morning, you that are struggling in your life, struggling to survive. There's no money. It's hard. I want to tell you, God did not design that life for you. He had something completely different in mind for you. He predestined you to live a life He planned for you without brokenness, without hardship, without pain. This morning you're telling me what you are saying seems too good to be true. Then I want to tell you, yes, logic and God's logos seldom agree. Man's logic is saying, you know what, this is the world we're living, this is how it is. It seldom agrees with what God says about you. And that's why your mind must be renewed so that you will start thinking with God's mind. And what I'm telling you this morning, I'm not catching out of the wind. I can tell you that for the last 30 years I've lived this life. I've lived a life of miracles. In fact, God said to me, I want you to write a book and call it Walking in the place of miracles. Because that's where I've been walking for the past 30 years, ever since God called me. It's been one miraculous journey upon the next. I'm not talking about ministry only, I'm talking about everyday life. You know why? Because that day I gave Him my life. 
And I said, I want you to leave me from today onwards. And I want your plan. I don't want to hear what other people have got to say. Lord, I don't want to go to Bible school. I'm sorry, I'm not knocking Bible school this morning. Please understand me right. There is a good place for it and a need. In my life, I wanted to hear God. I wanted to understand God. Not from the principle of what others would teach me. I wanted Him to reveal Himself in me. And I tell you something, we come through a journey of seeing the miraculous and the marvelous for the last 30 years. In fact, I am a sign and I am a wonder this morning. Learn yes. that because God could lead me and teach me and educate me by His Spirit and put inside of me a vision and an understanding of His ways. This morning, God wants to do exactly the same for you. He knows who you are. He knows what He planned for you. All that you need to do is realign yourself with Him. And Jesus made it possible. You see, we understand salvation as a life-changing experience, and it is. Because it is the door into a new life. But you know what? Once you step through the door, the life still waits for you to live. You need to live that life. You need to press into that life. Most importantly, you need to give yourself to that life. It's a surrender. It's a willing giving of myself to say, Father, take me on the wings of your spirit. Unfold your destiny, your plan, who you dreamed me to be, what I was supposed to do. Let me have the imprint and the impact of heaven on earth for the time that I'm here. It's not always easy. It is challenging to say the least. But it is glorious. It is magnificent. And it's filled with His presence. For 30 years, We've not asked anybody for one cent in ministry. Not one. You can speak to people that's around my life, that's known me for some years, and ask them whether I've ever approached them to ask them for one cent of money. I don't need to. I live from God's treasury in heaven. He has predestined my way. And as long as I walk with Him, you know what? He has provision, provision, pre-prepared for this vision and for this life He had. His provision. Seasons of blessing await my life. And we always have what we need and more. I don't have to love by the rules of this world. I will not pray for your sickness. I will not agree with it either. And I will not delegate about it. It will be broken. Amen. It will be broken. Why can I say that? Because I've come to understand who He is. And I've come to understand who He made me to be. And I refuse to live by any other rules. This morning, you are a miracle Amen. waiting to unfold. Amen. I tell you something, there's so much potential, so much power in you that you know nothing about. Inside of you lives the true you. And this morning, God wants you to meet. He wants the two of you to connect. And I tell you something, once you step over into that place of saying, Father, start showing me and teaching me, the Holy Spirit needs to work in the place that it works is right here. Not in the brain box, but in your soul. Because this is where your soul is, it's also where your heart is. Your heart is not sitting between your ribs. Spiritually, your heart is right here, it's sitting here, it's your soul. That is your thoughts. Your emotions, your passions, your beliefs, who you are as a person is rested in your mindset. 
That's why the Bible says, as a man thinks, his heart so is he. You can't be more than who you know yourself to be and what you've accepted about yourself to be. You'll be exactly who you believe you are. That's who you will be. And that's why you need a fresh revelation from God so that you understand what you're waiting for the Bible to come. It's never going to come. Because you carry the potential of God. You are the answer. You are the revival. Release it if it's in your heart. Step into that dimension of understanding that God has sent me. I'm burdened for revival. That means I am his revivalist. He did not burst this in my heart for me to keep crying to heaven. Do you see that? Don't die waiting. Do you know how many people are dying waiting for God while God is waiting on them? Oh Lord, we, we, we want a revival, send a revival. Be the revival. Yes. Do whatever it takes if it means you must lock yourself away for five months or six months. Then you lock yourself away with God and find out what is to you. And when you come out of that place, I'm telling you, demons will break off. And I'm talking from experience because there's been times in my life that the Lord locked me away for five months. Five months in God's prisons. Five months day and night. I tell you something. When you come out of there, you don't wonder what's going to happen. You know. Because He's birthed it in you. And now He can release it. You'll never be greater than what you've discovered about yourself in God. And that's why you can never settle on anything that you know about God. And although I love Bible school and I love the Bible, it can be very dangerous because it draws truths about God. It sets certain things in place for us to believe. And I want to tell you this morning, there's not a Bible school, there's not a teacher, there's not a prophet, there's not an apostle that fully knows God. We are on a journey of ever unfolding truth about ourselves and about Him and about His kingdom. So what you hold today has to be true. Be careful what God shows you tomorrow. Because you may just find that what you were ready to die for was not the ultimate truth. There's actually a revelation beyond that. We have to live in a place where we keep discovering in God. We have never been called to stagnate. We are kingdom pioneers. We are people walking in new dimensions of ever increasing glory and the revelations of God never stop. And you know what revelation comes for? It's not there to swell your head. It's there so that you may come and become the revelation that you see and hear. That's the purpose. It's for you to change. This morning, To let go of the broken life and to allow Jesus to bring you into a reconciled life. To bring you back to who God knows you really are, whether you are a Christian or non Christian. This morning you've got to challenge yourself and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to show me clearly where I am and what I need to do. Because a lot of the problems that you have, you were never designed or destined to partake in. They've been placed upon you, not by God. Let's close our eyes this morning. Time has caught up with us. Dear Father, 
I pray for every life this morning and I pray for the impartation of your word this morning. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to produce this word in every life. Father, I pray right now, impart by your spirit, impart by your life, impart right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every life this morning that's lived on a false frequency, that's lived in a way that you never designed your destiny for your children. May you, Holy Spirit, enlighten the eyes of their hearts and understanding this morning to see who you see them as. And by your grace, step upon step and line upon line, lead them back to your original plan and the original beauty that you had in mind for them. I pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Before we close today, if you want, you can lift your hand and I'll do a special prayer with you. If you want, while well, all eyes are closed, you say, just pray for me today. I want, I, I know my life is not the way God wanted it to be and I want it changed. And, and maybe you've never asked Jesus to come into your life. Then today I want to give him my life and ask him to come in because I want the life God played for me. This is what I want. Maybe you are a Christian and, and, and you know, you know this morning, Father, you are speaking directly to me. Then lift your hand. Don't be ashamed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, you see every hand raised and it represents hearts this morning. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you enter every one of these lives. As people now lift their hands in repentance to say, Lord, I want you. I don't want this whole life. Receive them this morning. Holy Spirit, come. Walk into those lives. And become the light of life in them. Change their journey. Change their stars this morning. Change their destiny this morning. Realign them with your purpose and with your love. I pray for healing in every heart and every life and every home. The people today experience a turnaround in their life. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you where you are just to ask him and say, Jesus, I give my life to you today. Come into my life and let me experience your life in me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you that you are my sacrifice, that I may be free in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for receiving me. Thank you that today you come into my life and you begin speaking in me and you make me so hungry for your word that I cannot put it down, that I will eat it. And as I eat it with my spirit, I will be changed and my life will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. May I just ask this morning, who is sick here? Can you show me? Is there somebody specifically that came for healing? Nobody. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.